So we're going to take a look at Elementor 3.20, the beta version of it, and the one key feature that has now been added or basically given us the full feature that we sh Anyway, we'll come back to that in a moment. But let's take a quick look at the main new feature and a couple of the other things I want to talk about before we wrap things up. So stick around and we'll go through those at the end of the video. And it's going to be a short video, so don't worry. So what exactly has been added in to this new beta and why am I looking at it? Well, the main thing is the display conditions have now been updated to give us, I would assume, the full version that we didn't have before. So let's take a quick look at the options that have been added in and why this actually makes more sense now than it did when they first released it. So we have the 3.2 Beta 1 installed. It's important to note that because you may watch this a little later and it could be a later version and there may be some changes. So if things are not exactly the same, that's probably the reason why. Okay, so with that installed, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over into one of my templates. So the template is basically a loop item for a job role and we've got some basic content pulled in from a standard WordPress post, for example, the featured image and the title. We've also got some custom ACF meta fields included in the shape of things like location, salary, and so on. So now we want to apply any kind of conditional logic. We can now start to use that ACF or dynamic data. Before, we were limited to only working with basic functions that we had as part of WordPress. So let's take a look at how this works. Let's select, for example, the salary. I'm going to come over to our advanced. I'm going to scroll down to get the display conditions. Now, this is one of the first things that I really think needs to be changed. This needs to be placed either in its own tab at the top or just a little bit more prevalent because this is just a little bit hidden away. No big deal, but I think it would make things a little easier if it's a little bit more obvious. Okay, so let's open up the display conditions. And as you can see, it looks relatively similar to what we saw before. Let's add our first condition in. And now we can set this to dynamic data. So we can change this from the standard things like page titles and so on. And if we scroll through, we now start to have some more options in here. What we're looking for is the dynamic tags. So now we choose dynamic tags. You can see this opens up some different options. If we expand where it says title, this allows us to check the dynamic field we want to check against. So you've got some additional things inside here, like the title of the archive itself, the featured image information, like the title of the image, alt tags, caption, and so on, some author information. What we want, though, are the custom fields. And if we scroll underneath, you can see there's some additional custom field information to grab. But we want to grab the ones that we've actually created, these four. So what we're going to say is salary. Then we can choose the operator, how it's going to compare. So you can see we can choose between a range of different options here. And we're going to set this to is not empty. We'll hit save and close and click publish. And now you can see if we take a look at our card design where the marketing director is currently has no salary showing. You can see nothing shows up and it hides all of the information there. Whereas the junior copywriter and so on, they have values inserted. So they will show up correctly. So. There's nothing really rocket science about that. We've seen this kind of thing in several different plugins before, but we do now have a little bit more control of this. Another one of those things that was missing from the original release of this in beta recently. So go back to the conditions. We can easily come in and add some additional options inside here. So we may want to check against something else. We can click the and, and you can see we can add a second operator, a third, kind of, you get the idea. But what we didn't have before was the ability to change between and or or, which is kind of standard operators you'd expect from any kind of conditional logic. Now we can add another condition group, and this then allows us to check something else. So again, we've got all the options inside here, so we could check for dates, categories, all those kinds of things, login status, and so on. So we may say that people have to be logged in to be able to see this, and it has to have something there. So we could say that we want login status, and you could then set this to be is logged in or logged out, whichever you want. And again, you can add additional operators here as well. So this is, you could stack these on top of each other, so you have multiple ands, and then you could also have one or more or conditions included. So all those conditions would have to be met in the right way to be able to show or hide the content that you're actually applying this display condition to. So this now actually means that we've got a relatively fully featured set of dynamic conditions available to us. It's still a beta and hopefully this won't be in beta too long, but it's nice to see they actually go in and added this in and it hasn't taken too long. Personally, I still would prefer to have seen this right back at the beginning, just waited a couple of weeks and released the full thing. It just would have been a little bit more logical in my opinion, but it's here now. So let me know what your thoughts are. Can you see anything that's missing from there that you think I still have to use a third party plugin? Or is this going to give you everything that you want? There's my kind of and or condition for you. 
So that's basically the display conditions. So before we wrap things up, what else has been added into this beta release of 3.20? Well, we've got the pro display condition enhancements. As you can see, it's a pro feature. We've also got performance and accessibility enhancements, and we've got and more. So the enhancements that we have are improvements in performance and accessibility. So faster time to first byte, DOM optimization, and some accessibility improvements. So the Mega Menus has enhanced keyboard navigation and usability for mobiles. The login widget has screen readers can now read the hidden labels and the improved editor to navigate the widget panel and editing panel using the keyboard. Always good to see the fact that we have more accessibility options being included. And obviously any kind of speed improvements are obviously gonna be welcome anytime soon. I'd still like to see the code a little bit cleaner, but that's for another day. What else do we have? Some features and experimental updates. Now, default on new sites, grid containers, taxonomy, filter widgets, and display conditions. So these are now active by default. They're not something you actively enable. You can disable them, but they will always be switched on by default. So just bear that in mind. You also got features merged, the global style guides, page transitions, and the scroll snap have all been merged. What exactly does that even mean? But what it basically means is that you can't deactivate them. They are now features that are on no matter what. So again, bear that in mind. Now on top of what I've covered and what we talked about, there's also a bunch of more improvements to both the free version and the pro version. Pretty much all of these are tweaks. I'm sure there's a couple of bug fixes and things included in here as well. Now, this is, in my opinion, about time we started having some of these things brought in. I'm glad to see that they brought in what I would consider pretty much the full functionality that we need in dynamic conditions and visibility conditions. So we now can use dynamic content. It's good to see that that's been brought in. Took a long time, but it is there. So thankfully we do have that. Now there's still a lot more that needs to be added in to Elementor to make it competitive for more intermediate advanced websites, especially when you wanna work with dynamic data. So hopefully we will start to see these things being pushed out over the next 12 months. If not, then I do fear the fact that Elementor for more advanced users may become a thing of the past in a lot of use cases. But as always, let me have your thoughts in the comment section down below because I'd love to know your thoughts. Are you an Elementor user that is getting fed up with these not being here? Are you an Elementor user that's happy that these are here and you wouldn't want to change? Or have you already changed to an alternative product? Let me know in the comment section down below why, for whichever reason you have. As always, all applicable links are in the description. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tats and until next time, take care.